let me tell you. Okay, so this is about therapy. I'm supposed to have 12 sessions, like su successful therapy sessions um, before I can get weight loss surgery. So yeah, um, sadly, unfortunately, definitely sadly and unfortunately, um, the psychologist does not accept insurance. So I am sad about that. So I'm having to pay um, kind of a lot of money per session, but I think it'll be worth it. Behold, the tale of a woman weighed down by the burden of her own trauma, carrying the weight of 500 pounds upon her weary frame. A shadow loomed over her every step, and hope seemed but a distant dream. But in the depths of her despair, a glimmer of light shone through. For in just 12 sessions, her wounds could be healed her soul restored, and her body set free from the chains of obesity. It was a miracle beyond compare, a journey that promised to be both arduous and transformative. Yet, alas, the woman's heart was not without flaw. Though the path to salvation lay before her, she was blinded by the pleasures of the flesh. Her stomach rumbled with the desire for takeout, her mind craved the fleeting thrill of a single Lego set. She wasted her days in the pursuit of useless trinkets, even as the key to her liberation lay beyond her grasp. The cost of therapy weighed heavily upon her, and she balked at the mere thought of paying out of pocket. But what had the cost of her own life? Was it not worth every penny to be set free from the shackles of her own mind? Her priorities were a mystery to all who knew her, for even as she stumbled towards the abyss, she clung to her misguided desires. What sort of adult in their 30s could be so blind to their own salvation? Yet still, the glimmer of hope remained, shining bright like a beacon in the dark. The 12 sessions called out to her, promising freedom and release from the pain that had consumed her for so long. And though the path ahead was fraught with peril, she knew that she must take it for the sake of her own soul. We do have a dishwasher, but I prefer hand clean dishes. Behold, my fellow seekers of entertainment, for the moment we have been waiting for is finally at hand. For too long have we yearned for a glimpse into the world of dishwashing, a saga shrouded in mystery and enigma. But lo and behold, the time has come for us to bear witness to a moment of pure wonder. The clamoring of our hearts has not gone unnoticed, for the heavens themselves have conspired to deliver unto us the content we have so fervently begged for. The time has come for us to behold a dishwashing moment of epic proportions, a situation that will forever be etched into the annals of history. The very earth itself trembles with anticipation, for the unveiling of this spectacle is no small matter. The very fate of our souls hangs in the balance, for the answer to the question that has haunted us for so long now lies before us. And yet, there are those among us who scoff at the significance of this moment who mock our thirst for knowledge and belittle our desires. They sneer at the notion that a mere dishwashing moment could hold any meaning, any value, but they do not know the power of our obsession, the depth of our yearning, for this is not just any moment, my friends, but a defining moment in the history of humanity. It is a moment that will test our mettle, that will reveal the very essence of our beings. It is a moment that will go down in legend, that will be recounted for generations to come. So let us not squander this opportunity, my brothers and sisters, but instead let us embrace it with all our hearts. Let us revel in the majesty of the dishwashing moment and let its power wash over us like a wave. For this is the content we have been begging for and it is finally here before us. I did good on my makeup though. Like it's not too smeary. I love this mascara, it's so good, but I just wanted to like fresh out the appointment because it is through, um, it's online obviously because telehealth ever since like COVID and all that, like that's just like the main thing 
now that people do so. Oh, how fortunate we are to witness the advent of a new age where one can seek therapy without the pesky inconvenience of leaving one's own abode. What a marvel of modern technology to be able to address one's mental health concerns from the comfort of a cozy couch. Truly, it is a blessing beyond compare for what could be more desirable than the ability to avoid the outside world entirely. Who needs fresh air, human interaction, or the warmth of the sun on their skin when one can simply retreat into the depths of their own home and seek solace in the virtual realm. Indeed, it is a wondrous thing, this online therapy, a solution to all our problems, a panacea for our ills. Why bother with the hassle of getting dressed, braving the elements, and facing the challenges of the outside world when we can simply log on and have our problems magically disappear? No longer must we struggle to maintain our mental health in the face of adversity. No longer must we face the daunting task of actually leaving our own homes to seek help. For now, we have the online therapist, a digital savior who will guide us through the trials and tribulations of life without ever forcing us to step foot outside. Truly, this is a moment of triumph, a glorious victory for those who fear the outside world. Let us bask in the glow of our own introversion, secure in the knowledge that we can now address our mental health concerns without ever leaving the safety of our own homes. Love that for her, indeed. I have had some people ask me why don't I go to like Mexico to get weight loss surgery. It's drastically cheaper. You know, you don't have to go through all these requirements, etc., etc. And the answer is pretty easy, especially now um, I am following someone's journey on here on YouTube who went to Mexico to get their surgery done and there was like not many requirements. like no therapy, nothing, and now they're struggling with like being afraid of food because they didn't have like the requirements of therapy beforehand, which now that I've started therapy and I've talked more to my psychologist, like the one who recommended therapy that I do it, um, now that I understand more of the reasoning behind it, it makes sense because I don't want to get my surgery and be afraid of food and I uh, it just seems so unhealthy to me when getting weight loss surgery is supposed to be like a pivotal moment in your life that is healthy and good things will be coming from that you literally just go to Mexico and I know you do like a little bit of lab work and stuff like that and that's pretty much it whispers abound of a journey that amber may undertake a journey to a far off land where she may seek a solution to her troubles but can it be true can she who has not ventured beyond the threshold of her own abode for so long truly be contemplating a trip to mexico for surgery the very notion seems preposterous absurd who in their right mind would dare to think that amber could leave the safety of her own home let alone venture beyond the borders of her own country it defies all reason, all logic, and yet the rumors persist. There are those who claim that Amber is planning to make the journey to undergo a surgery that could change the very course of her life. Is she truly capable of such a feat, or are these mere flights of fancy the idle musings of those who seek to stir up trouble? She is the type of person who will push the boundaries. She will explore the depths of her own capacity. She will be the type that challenges her new stomach to see just how much it can hold. Count on it, dear friends, for this is not a woman who shies away from a challenge. She will take on all comers. She will defy the odds. She will be the one to push the limits of what is possible. <laughs> Talk about shrimp feet. Yes, we are. Um, if you guys don't know about this era in my life, this was about four to five years ago. And I lost in only a couple of days about 12,000 subscribers. And here's why. I have not watched this video since I uploaded it. Oh, mortals, hear me now and bear witness to the great drama that unfolds before us. For here we have a tale of epic proportions, a saga that will be sung of for generations to come. It all begins with a simple request, a plea from the audience to see more of the world beyond the walls of Amberlin's abode. 
Please show us vlogs of outside, they cried out, yearning for a glimpse of the world beyond. And yet, in response, we hear the voice of our heroine, Amberlyn herself, uttering those fateful words, highly requested shrimp gate. What could it mean, this cryptic utterance? What horrors and wonders await us on this journey? We can only imagine, for the road ahead is shrouded in mystery and uncertainty. Will Amberlin lead us to the promised land, to a world of wonder and excitement? Or will we find ourselves lost in the labyrinth of her mind, trapped in a never-ending cycle of intrigue and deception? For four years she has wandered the earth, a lost and tormented soul, haunted by the echoes of her past misdeeds. And yet, in all that time, she has learned nothing, for she still clings to her delusions and avoids taking responsibility for her actions. Here for it, there for it, listening. 190 grams to 220 grams of carbs. So, that's obviously not really a low carb diet, definitely not keto. And then calories, 2,200 to 2,500. So over 2,000. So 2,500 calories is a lot, but I am putting all control. I am putting everything I've ever thought about weight loss, all of that in the trash. And I'm throwing the trash out because I am following what they want me to do and that is how it's going to be. For she, in her infinite wisdom, has embarked upon a journey of self-discovery, a quest to unlock the secrets of the universe and conquer the very forces of nature themselves. Yet, even as she sets out upon this path, the cynics and skeptics gather round, eager to tear down her every move, to belittle her every effort, to cast doubt upon the very foundations of her being. And so, they mock and taunt her, proclaiming that her diet is doomed to fail, that she is foolish to even attempt such a feat, that she is but a mere mortal in the face of the mighty professionals, but she, undaunted by their jeers and scorn, stands tall and proud, for she knows in her heart that she is destined for greatness. She will not be deterred by the naysayers, for she knows that they are but the feeble-minded who cannot see beyond their own limitations, for our heroine is a force to be reckoned with, a warrior of the mind and body, and she will not rest until she has achieved her ultimate goal. So Feline really likes these uh, cauliflower crust pepperoni pizza life cuisine thingies. So I got three of them. Ooh, my hair. <laughs> I do want to try one, so I'm interested because she says they're like really good. So I'm excited to try it. So I got some Atkins, which is good if you're doing like low carb, whatever it may be. Um, these remind me of M&Ms, but they're not. There's literally only one net carb and 130 calories. Love that. Amidst the chattering of the crowd, a shadowy figure lurks, a being consumed by a singular obsession, a fixation so all-consuming that it has consumed her entire existence. For her life revolves around the most primal of human needs, the insatiable hunger for food. It is a hunger that drives her every thought, every action, every waking moment. And so, she revels in the glory of her gastronomic pursuits, showing off her meal with a fervor and zeal that is both awe-inspiring and terrifying. For it is clear to all who witness her obsession that this is no mere hobby or passing fancy. This is a way of life. But as she basks in the glow of her culinary conquest, one cannot help but wonder if there is a deeper sadness lurking beneath the surface. Is this all there is to her existence, this endless quest for sustenance and pleasure? Will she ever find fulfillment beyond the tantalizing flavors and textures that tantalize her taste buds? Alas, it seems that her fate is sealed, for she is a slave to her own desires, forever bound to the whims of her appetite. And so, we can only watch in awe and sorrow as she continues on her endless journey, a prisoner of her own making, consumed by the very thing that sustains her. A lot. Um, so many memories blocked. And it's scary because it's like, what am I forgetting? But there are, you know, some things, some trauma that I do remember, of course. And I remember the way I felt eating those cookies. I remember why I was doing it. I missed my parents a lot. Um, I remember I hadn't seen them in a while. Um, I didn't know where my brother was. 
And because we were separated at that point, because I went to the group home and I felt scared, I was terrified. From the depths of the human psyche, there arises a primal urge, a drive so powerful that it can push individuals to do whatever it takes to achieve their desires. And so, we see people striving to attain their goals, no matter the cost, driven by an unquenchable thirst for success. For some, that thirst is satiated by the pursuit of wealth, or fame. But for Amber, her addiction is far more insidious. Her life revolves around her size, her weight, her sheer mass. It is a fate that many find incomprehensible, a life trapped within a body that seems to grow larger with each passing day. But for Amber, it is a fate that she has embraced, a way of life that she clings to with a fervor that is both admirable and tragic. For she knows that her weight is a burden, a curse that weighs heavily upon her, both physically and emotionally. And yet, she cannot let go, cannot break free from the chains that bind her to this endless cycle of consumption and regret. And so, she continues down this path, aware of the dangers and consequences that lie ahead. But even as she marches towards her own demise, she clings to the hope that one day, things will change that she will find the strength to overcome her addiction and reclaim her life. But until that day comes, she will continue to do what works for her, driven by an unquenchable hunger that threatens to consume her entirely. For only when that hunger is no longer enough to sustain her, will she find the courage to break free from its grasp and forge a new path towards a brighter future. Partially, but it was just about everything. Everything felt scary. Um, I have been suffering so bad and I, I need to go back on medicine. That is why I scheduled um, a psychiatrist appointment because I, the medicine I was taking, it just wasn't working anymore. So um, I was told to stop taking it. So I did stop taking it and now my anxiety is, it's just, it's, it's not good, obviously. Observe how the subject of our discussion is utterly consumed with self-admiration, as if her own existence were a work of art worthy of constant contemplation. It is astounding how her therapy sessions serve not as a means of self-reflection, but rather a source of stimulation, an adrenaline rush. One wonders if she seeks not healing, but rather validation for her uniqueness as she collects diagnoses like badges to be displayed proudly on her chest. Oh, but the fascination does not end there, for she revels in the peculiarities that make her who she is, eagerly seeking an audience to bask in her quirkiness. Even her companion, Feline, is called upon to amplify her glory to sing praises of her eccentricities. It is a marvel, truly, to witness such a level of self-absorption, such a complete devotion to the cult of the self. One can only wonder at what point she will reach a state of perfect enlightenment, where her self-love will transcend this earthly plane and attain immortality. <laughs> okay! Is there a no? Probably not, because the troll stuff never has notes, ever. Oh, there's a no. They told me to F off. Okay. Toddler scavenger hunt cards. And you know what? <laughs> if you think I'm not gonna go outside and play this. See, this is what I'm saying. Uh, like majority of the people who are like, vlog outside, vlog outside. It's just, it's all trolls. It's like the people who enjoy my content for what it's worth are the people who I like and who I enjoy to have around here, you know? The audacity of some people. How dare they suggest that Amberlyn Reed venture out of her humble abode and explore the great outdoors. It's clear that these individuals are nothing more than ruthless trolls seeking to torment her at every turn. But let's be real here. It's not like they're asking her to climb Mount Everest or swim across the Pacific Ocean. All they're asking is for her to step outside and breathe in some fresh air, soak up some sunshine, and maybe take a leisurely stroll. It's not rocket science, but for someone like Amberlyn Reed, whose life seems to revolve around her tiny apartment, it may seem like an insurmountable task. She seems to be so fixated on herself and her own issues that she can't even fathom the idea of stepping out of her comfort zone. In fact, it's quite telling that she finds it so bizarre that people would want to see her do anything outside of her apartment. It's as if she's trapped in her own little world. 
where the only thing that matters is her own existence. Perhaps it's time for Amberlynn to take a step back and realize that the world is much bigger than her apartment. Maybe if she starts to venture out a little more, she'll discover that there's a whole world waiting for her, full of new experiences and adventures. But I didn't want this to get like moldy right next to my office desk, so I had to open. And it's like, this is where it's like, there's funny trolling like lighthearted trolling. And then there's just downright like abuse. <laughs> like this is, it's like sending alcohol to an alcoholic or sending um, heroin to a heroin addict. People say all the time, you're not bullied. Why can't you just take the criticism? Why can't you just um, deal with it? Take the heat or get out of the kitchen. Am I right? That is what I hear all the time, but there comes a time where it's like, you guys, I'm not the fucking problem. Some of you are. And yeah, I'm getting mad because I'm fucking... It's like I try to do something nice. And I know people can say, why are you showing this? It's to show you guys that this is the shit that I deal with outside of the fucking camera. You guys wouldn't even believe the shit that I have to deal with. And it's just part of the problem. So... You know, this is what happens when my YouTube channel seven, eight years ago ends up on a fat shaming website and all of you guys decide to come follow me. This is what happens. Fat shaming isn't real. What do you mean it's fat phobia? It's constructive criticism. What is that? You're sending alcohol to an alcoholic. So <laughs> I hope you have fun sitting next to Trump in hell. In this situation, there are two possible scenarios. First, it's unlikely that the post office or Amazon would allow cake to be shipped to a po' box. So it's possible that Amberlynn sent the cake to herself just to create drama and get more views on her channel. The second possibility is that someone actually sent her the cake as a kind gesture with high quality food and cute packaging from a famous Eastern European bakery in Kansas City. However, the way she behaved when she received it was absolutely shameful. She acted as if the sender had sent her anthrax, completely ignoring the possibility that someone was just trying to do something nice for her. Either way, the way Amberlynn reacted is disappointing. If someone wanted to troll her with food, they could have easily sent her a box of TikTok relapse cookies or some other unhealthy junk food. However, if the sender did intend to send her something of high quality, it's a shame that she acted in such a rude manner. Her behavior in this situation is so perplexing that it's hard not to be taken to another dimension by it. Next, got some jalapeno and cheddar cheese smoked chicken sausage. So 150 calories, really one of them has 14 protein. Okay, I got some cage-free hard-boiled eggs. Some sea salt plantain chips. Oh, Amber, you truly outdid yourself this time. What a brilliant move to discard those high-quality, gourmet baked goods that someone sent you and replace them with bags upon bags of processed junk food. How thoughtful of you. Who needs quality, artisanal food when you can indulge in cheap, unhealthy junk? I'm sure whoever sent you those baked goods is thrilled to know that you valued their gift so much that you immediately threw it away in favor of some low-grade processed snacks. Well done, Amber. Your impeccable decision-making skills are truly awe-inspiring. Into therapy so I can get put on anesthesia. I can get put in a very vulnerable spot that could kill me or cause horrible complications to save my life. Yes, that is what I'm doing. Her demeanor seems to suggest that she views the surgery as an easy solution to her problems, despite the fact that it comes with a considerable amount of risk. 
It's disconcerting to see her smiling so happily as she speaks about the possibility of the surgery killing her. This kind of attitude is exactly what makes people believe that she is not taking the matter seriously and is viewing the surgery as a quick fix to her weight problems. The nonchalance with which she talks about the risks of the procedure is alarming and it seems as though she is not truly grasping the gravity of the situation. It's clear that she needs to take a more serious approach to her health and this surgery should be seen as a last resort, not a cure-all. I can be better for her and be better for a possible marriage. Hey Amber, um, I need advice on school. So I used to go to community college and then FAFSA ended up dropping me. So I had to end up paying for my community college. And since then, I just haven't gone back. But I feel like I need to go back to do like good in life. And yeah, I just need advice. Do you think I should go back? Or do you think that I should... I don't know. What do you think? What do you think I should do? In a stunning twist of events, Amberlynn has now become a life coach for her viewers, despite her own struggles and inability to get her own life in order. It's absolutely mind-boggling that people are actually calling in and asking for her advice. It's hard to imagine anyone who would take guidance from someone who has publicly admitted to being unable to even perform basic tasks. One can't help but wonder if Amberlynn is paying people to call in and ask for her advice, as it seems impossible that anyone could genuinely view her as a source of wisdom or inspiration. Her life has been plagued with poor choices, lack of motivation, and an inability to follow through on her goals. It's truly baffling that people are willing to seek life advice from someone who has repeatedly demonstrated an inability to manage her own life. How can she possibly offer guidance on how to live a fulfilling and successful life when she can't even manage her own basic needs? It seems like a recipe for disaster and a surefire way to lead others down a path of failure and despair.